Jason Fried, it doesn't have to be crazy at work. Welcome to the chaotic world of work where long hours, distractions, and endless meetings often leave us burned out. And it doesn't have to be crazy at work. Authors Jason Fried and David Heinemeyer Hansen argue that you can maintain a profitable business without having a stress-induced culture. By treating your company as a product and asking important questions, you can simplify workflows and find areas for improvement. Discover how you can change your mindset, protect employees' time, and create a healthier workplace environment in this summary, which aims to help you introduce lasting calm in your company. Phasing out crazy at work. Long working hours have become the norm, leading to stress and unproductivity. The solution lies in changing the way organizations view their workplace culture, treating it like a product that can be improved. By asking important questions and being open to making changes, companies can create a lasting atmosphere of calm and productivity. Reconsidering the culture of work. The common notion of hard work and the battle-like mentality in the business world, popularized by social media, is counterproductive and often results in a toxic workplace culture. While progress and innovation are not achieved through brute force, there is a focus on taking care of one's own business goals rather than dominating competitors. Instead of working excessive hours and accepting unethical behavior, adopting a mentality of pacifism promotes a healthier work environment and sustainable success. Protect your time. In It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work, the authors explain how protecting employees' time is crucial for increased productivity. A typical workday is punctuated by endless interruptions such as emails, IM chats, and meetings, which makes eight hours feel insufficient. Unfortunately, many companies treat employees' time and attention as infinite resources, but an individual's attention is among the scarcest commodities nowadays. The author's solution is for companies to treat their employees' time as they do their products or data. Employees need their company to help protect their time, and one great way to do this is to eliminate lengthy status update meetings that take up valuable chunks of interaction-free time. At the author's company, they have introduced a more time-efficient way of keeping everyone informed. This system allows for employees to have more time to focus on their essential tasks, leading to increased productivity. The Illusion of Corporate Family As a leader, one must create a work culture that values individual families over the illusion of corporate family. In this way, employees can enjoy a fulfilling workplace that accommodates personal lives and well-being. The work environment you create as a leader sets the tone for your company. It is crucial to ensure that the beliefs and values you promote align with the right goals. Many modern companies propagate the idea that their employees are part of a big family. This sentiment, while seemingly positive, is problematic because it creates unrealistic expectations. A workplace is not a family unit, it is simply a group of people working together towards a common goal. Work should not take precedence over personal life. Businesses that propagate the notion of a corporate family aim to convince their workers that they must make personal sacrifices for the good of the company. This strategy often leads employees to subjugate their own needs and those of their real families to the benefit of the organization. Rather than emphasizing the idea of a corporate family, leaders must create a work culture that values the diverse families that make up their employees. This means encouraging employees to take personal time off, minimizing overtime, and promoting the fulfillment of personal goals. A happy and contented employee is more productive and invested in their work. By investing in their employees' well-being, leaders can create a more effective and supportive workplace. In short, a business can best help its employees and the families they belong to by creating a work environment that values individual well-being and personal lives, instead of promoting the illusion of the corporate family. Calming the dread of deadlines The book suggests ways of making work processes less stressful by introducing two key changes in office environments, rethinking deadlines and finding a better way to introduce new ideas. In many cases, dreadlines, overambitious deadlines, may do more harm than good, leading to stress and burnout among employees. 
The authors suggest a policy of never allowing the scope of a project to increase once started, and allowing employees the power to shrink a project if needed, which ensures strict adherence to deadlines. The book also argues that face-to-face -face meetings for introducing new ideas lead to rushed and ad hoc reactions, whereas introducing new ideas through written communication and allowing colleagues more time to think things over leads to more thoughtful feedback. The Art of Balanced Risk-Taking Silicon Valley entrepreneurs believe that big rewards require equally huge gambles, but balanced risk-taking is key. Overcautiousness can lead to workplace anxiety. By taking calculated risks, implementing change without excessive questioning, and letting the market provide real information, companies can create a stress-free environment in which reasonably risky decisions are made. In Silicon Valley, the belief that enormous rewards are impossible without equally substantial risks is ubiquitous among entrepreneurs. The downside of this habit is the problem of excessive workplace craziness. Interestingly, being too risk-averse can cause workplace anxiety. According to the authors, balance is crucial to finding an appropriate level of risk. They claim that their creation has struck the ideal balance, taking risks, but not risky behavior. They increased their eponymous software's monthly cost from $29 to $99 as a recent risk, for instance. However, zero market research was done beforehand to survey consumers' attitudes towards the new price. The key to mitigating this risk was that the price was raised only for potential new clients and not existing ones. Existing customers received new software versions without an increase in price, so they could continue to rely on their roughly 100,000 existing customers. To put it another way, the authors took calculated risks that could be quickly reversed. Ironically, being excessively cautious about risk can lead to soaring stress and anxiety in the workplace. Many firms become paralyzed while attempting to implement change because they become fixated on removing any uncertainty or risk associated with the change. They, therefore, embark on lengthy quests for predictive information. The whole organization becomes trapped in uncertainty and indecision as a result of this. The solution to this problem is straightforward, just do it. Real information can only be obtained when consumers interact with new products or changes. Careful testing is just a simulation, and it can only give probabilities, not guarantees. Take a deep breath, make the transformation, and let the market provide the data. In summary, creating a stress-free environment around reasonably risky decision-making is possible by taking calculated risks, implementing change without excessive questioning, and letting the market provide real information. The power of choice. In a hectic modern life, it's easy to forget that every individual has the power to choose their behavior, priorities, and treatment of others. This is especially important when handling customer complaints. Jean-Louis Gassi, the former head of Apple France, wisely stated that when it comes to handling customer complaints, there are two possible options, treat it as highly important or shrug it off as trivial. Whatever position you choose, the customer will choose the other. Taking every customer complaint seriously is crucial as it prevents them from upping the ante and ultimately burdening you with more conflict. This applies to all individuals, regardless of their position. By introducing some calm in their sphere of influence, they can improve communication with customers, redesign interactions with colleagues, and regain control over their own time. In conclusion, it doesn't have to be crazy at work advocates for a stress-free and calm work environment. The authors challenge the norms of overworking and provide ways to achieve a healthier workspace, from simplifying company structure and minimizing interruptions to rethinking the way deadlines and new ideas are approached. It is important to remember that individual choices can make a huge difference towards bringing serenity and eliminating stress, by striking a balance between risk-taking and caution and adopting effective communication. Not only will your employees become happier and more productive, but your workspace will no longer be plagued by the chaos of the modern working culture.